Okay, so in this video we want to have a look at something called direct and inverse proportion. We want to look at proportion um, and really this is a, an example of a relationship between two variables and whether that is a direct relationship or um, an inverse um, relationship. This is, I, I think, slightly out of place in this topic, but I understand uh, why it's here and it's because it has a connection to the um, hyperbolas that we looked at in the last video. But other than that, this is quite separate um, and then we'll be taking a step back towards our graphs and our transformations of graphs. So um, just to highlight that, um, I would say, you know, looking forward, this isn't a particularly significant um, section of this course, um, although um, the idea of proportion sort of came up a bit out of nowhere um, in a VCE exam a couple of years ago when it's something that we haven't really been teaching explicitly at sort of year 9 and 10 level for a little while now. So um, I suspect that's also why this has cropped back up here. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at what we're looking at here. So two quantities are proportional if one, if as one changes, the other changes in a specific way. Okay. Um, and we have, we're going to look at two types of proportion, direct proportion and indirect proportion. So we say that two quantities are directly proportional if as one quantity increases, the other also increases by a constant proportion. Okay. If X and Y vary directly, we use this notation. Okay. And this symbol, like a fish is how I would draw that if I'm drawing it by hand, um, is that says that Y... Um, is proportional to x. And so what that means is, if we understand, it actually means that y is directly proportional to x, um, is that um, as y changes, x changes by a constant proportion, okay, and vice versa. And so therefore what we have here is a linear relationship. And we can say, once if we can write that, say that y is directly proportional to x, then we can immediately say that means that y must be equal to k times x. It would also be true that x is equal to k times y. Um, obviously, those values of k would be different depending on which way you set up the proportion. And we call k the constant of proportionality. Okay, sort of by, by what factor are they proportional? Um, when we, as I, as I mentioned, if we were to graph a relationship of directly proportional quantities, we would see a linear graph um, going through the origin because obviously there's no, you know, plus a number out here. So uh, y-intercept is at zero um, and with a gradient of k. So the constant of proportionality gives the gradient of the linear relationship. Okay, let's just work through some examples. The total cost, C dollars, varies directly with the number of soft drink cans purchased, which is N. If the shop sells each um, can of soft drink for $3.25, write down a relationship between C and N. Now you might be able to do that straight away and that's perfectly fine. You might prefer to start with C is proportional, directly proportional to N, which means that C is going to be some number times N. And then we can use the information that we have to work out what K has, K has to be. So if the shop sells each can of soft drink for $3.25, okay, so we know uh, if we were to buy one can of soft drink, the cost would be $3.25, okay? And from that we can work out that, um, so we can sub that into our equation and we can work out that K is $3.25. Now you could probably work out that K is $3.25 without needing to sort of make the substitution. Um, it's clear that for every one increase in the number of cans purchased, the cost is going to increase by $3.25. And so therefore the relationship is cost is $3.25 times the number of cans, okay? So perfectly fine to go straight um, to the rule. Um, but obviously we can go through this process if we need to. So once we've got the rule, find the cost of eight cans of soft drink. Okay, so the cost is going to be $3.25 times eight. I'm just gonna use my cows to get that answer for me here while I'm here. It's not impossible though. $3 times eight is $24 and 25 cents times eight is $2, so $26. Find how many cans can be purchased for $78. Okay, so the number of the total cost is 78. What is the number of cans? So N is 78 divided by 3.25. Again, I'm just going to use my CAS here. It's really just about this understanding of proportion that we want to establish, and in particular, the um, inverse proportion, which will connect to our hyperbolas we've looked at recently. Okay, let's have a look at another example. If M is directly proportional to H, 
and m equals 90 when h equals 20, determine the relationship between m and h. Okay, so m is directly proportional to h, which means that m is k times h. Now, obviously, you can use any letter rather than k, but um, we tend to use k. All right, so then we also know when m is uh, when h is 20, m is 90. Okay, so 90 is it going to be equal to k times 20? which means k is equal to 90 divided by 20, which is 9 on 2, which is perfectly fine. We could leave it as that, or 4.5. Okay, And so therefore, m is equal to 4.5 times h. Now, just to be clear, it would also be perfectly correct if we had instead written it as h is proportional to m and therefore h is equal to k times m, that would be perfectly fine. Um, we would just ultimately have found that k was, instead of being 9 on 2, it was 2 on 9. Okay, And that's the same relationship. If h is 2 ninths times m, that means 9 on 2 times h is equal to m. They're the same relationship, and that's exactly what we've got up here. Okay, so um, find the value of m when h equals 16. Okay, so m is going to be, I'm going to stick with the fractions because I prefer to work with fractions by hand. They're essentially whole numbers. 9 on 2 times 16, the 2 will cancel down with the 16 and we get 9 times 8, which is 72. Find the value of h when m equals 10. 10 equals 9 on 2 times h, doubling both sides, 20 equals 9h, and therefore h is 20 divided by 9. Consider the relationship um, when a equals pi r squared. So this is a non-linear relationship, and so a and r are not directly proportional because if they're directly proportional, we get a linear relationship. However, we can say that a and r squared are directly proportional because r squared times a number gives me a. Okay, So this would imply that a is directly proportional to r squared, which means that a is equal to k times r squared, and in this case k, the constant of proportionality is pi. Okay, so let's have a look at another example then. Suppose that t is directly proportional to d squared and that t equals 100 when d equals 2. Determine the relationship between t and d. Okay, so t is directly proportional to d squared, which means that t is equal to k times d squared. If we sub in this point, essentially, when t is 100 when d is 2, so 100 equals k times 2 squared, 100 equals 4k, and so k is 25. And so therefore, our rule is t equals 25 times d squared. Find the value of t when d is 3. So t is going to be 25 times 3 squared, which is 20, sorry, 25 times 9. 25 times 10 would be 250, so times 9 is going to be 25 less than that, so 225. Find the value of d when t equals 200, given that d is bigger than 0. Okay, so this time subbing... 200 in place of t in our formula. So I'm subbing into this formula here. Um, 200 equals 25 times d squared, so dividing by 25. 100 divided by 25 is 4, so 200 divided by 25 is going to be 8. And so therefore d is plus or minus the square root of 8. Um, but we know, so actually we don't need the negative because it tells us that d is positive. So d is going to be the square root of 8 since we know that d has to be bigger than 0, and simplifying that third, d is going to be 2 root 2. Okay, inverse proportion. So with the direct proportion, one quantity proportional to another quantity, we get a linear relationship. When we have inverse proportion, two quantities are inversely proportional. If one, as one quantity increases, the other decreases by a constant proportion. Okay, so if x and y vary inversely, we say that y is directly proportional to, sorry, that y is directly proportional to 1 over x. That's the same as saying that y is inversely proportional to x. Okay, the inverse reciprocal of x, 1 on x. Um, so if x and y vary inversely, um, we, we don't say, we don't have a special symbol for y is inversely proportional to x. Um, we say that y is proportional, directly proportional to 1 on x. And so this means that y is equal to k times 1 on x, or k on x. And so what we have here is a um, hyperbola, if we were to graph it. Um, 
although we're usually just talking about situations where x is positive, so usually just the right-hand um, half of the hyperbola. Um, but obviously we need more information on that. Note that if y is inversely proportional to x, that's equivalent to saying that y is directly proportional x to x, so we've talked about that. And relationship between quantities, relationships between quantities that are inversely proportional can be represented graphically as a hyperbola with asymptotes at x equals 0 and y equals 0 and a dilation factor of k from the x-axis. Okay, let's have a look at example 4. So the time taken to paint a house, t days, is inversely proportional to the number of painters. Okay, so as we increase the number of painters, we don't increase the amount of time, we're actually going to decrease the amount of time. So that's why we have inverse proportion happening here. Okay, so that means we know that um, t, the time, is directly proportional to 1 on n, the number of painters. If it takes, and the, so that means that t is going to be equal to k on n, again where k is the constant of proportionality. If it takes um, two painters three days to paint the house, um, determine the relationship between T and N. Okay, so we know when N equals two, number of painters, sorry, when N equals two, um, the time is three days, so T equals three. And so that means that three equals K over two, and so K equals six. And so therefore our relationship is T equals six divided by N. So if we want to find the number of days for three painters to paint the house, we're going to let n equal 3, so t is going to be 6 on 3, which is 2 painters. The number of painters it took, um, the number of painters it took um, only one day to paint the house. It's not a very well phrased sentence. So the number of painters that were needed for the time taken to paint the house to be only one day. Okay, so we want to make time taken 1, and it's going to be equal to 6 on n. And so therefore multiplying both sides of that equation by n, n equals 6. And so it's going to take 6 painters if we want to spend only one day painting the house. Um, sorry, that's not uh, 2 painters. That is 2 days taken to paint the house here. And this is 6 painters taken to paint the house in one day. Example 5, suppose that y is inversely proportional to the square of x and that y equals 36 when x equals 5. Find the relationship between y and x. Okay, so if y is inversely proportional to the square of x, that means y, oh sorry, y is directly proportional to 1 over the square of x. And so y is equal to k times 1 on x or k on x squared. Sorry, k times 1 on x squared or k on x squared. So we're going to have a truncus here. Um, so we can substitute our information in, so we know when x equals sorry, 5, uh, y equals 36, so 36 is equal to k over 5 squared, 36 equals k on 25, and so k equals uh, 36 on 25, that should be, if I think about 36 as being 9 times 4, so what I'm trying to do here in my head, I'm thinking I'm trying to do 36 times 25. Okay, I know 36 is 9 times 4, and then I want to times that by 25. So all multiplication, the brackets don't matter. I can think about 4 times 5 as being 100, 9 of those, and so it's going to be 900. Okay, so our rule then is, sorry, let's just get me some rule room. So our rule is that y equals 900 divided by x squared. Find the value of y when x is equal to 15. Okay, so y is going to be equal to 900 on 15 squared. 15 squared is 225. Now I could work on simplifying that if I want. Well, we already know that uh, 900 is 36 lots of 25. So we already know that's 36 times 25. 25 definitely goes into 225. It goes 8 times into 200 plus another one. So it's 9 on 25. So we've got 36 on 9, which is going to be 4. Okay, Or you might have thought about that in a different way, but you should be able to do that level of number work. Find the value of x when y equals 49, given that, apologies, given that x is bigger than 0. Okay, so find the value of x when y equals 49, so let's sub y equals 49 into our equation. Okay, uh, let's multiply by x squared. So 49x squared equals 900 dividing by 49. Now rather than focusing on simple, trying to simplify 900 on 49, which I actually don't think will simplify, 
we want to think about the fact that we want to take the square root. Now normally we would take positive and negative when we do the square root, but we know that x has to be positive and so we're only interested in the positive square root. And we know that the square root of 90, 900 sorry, is 30 and we know that the square root of 49 is 7 and so we can work that out. So as I said, not really connected to um, what we've studied except that we will see some examples of hyperbolas and truncuses um, along with linear and quadratic perhaps and we could also see other functions. Um, so graphically um, they've got connections to the hyperbola um, but really it's more an algebraic process and a little bit of good sort of number practice at the moment but nothing too strenuous and we'll be um, returning to looking at some new graph shapes and applying our transformations to those in the next video.